Good morning, everybody. Today is a little bit of a dreary day, but I'm happy it's not a rainy, rainy, miserable day because my guest had a little bit of a drive, didn't you? A little bit. You? A, little <laughs> a little bit of a drive. That's a nice drive. We though. found her actually on YouTube, and it's very strange because you were critiquing and talking about a movie that I absolutely love, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. It's a good movie. But we're also going to talk a little bit about how YouTube has <clears throat> pretty much changed the world because television anchors usually use teleprompters. I don't have a teleprompter. I've never had one in 16 years of television. Right. Don't tell me what to say because I'm going to say <laughs> what comes out of my mouth. Exactly. And sometimes yeah. what comes out of my mouth gets me in trouble. But mm -hmm. it's my program, my opinion. I'm a conservative Christian. I'm a Baptist girl. I am um, very, <laughs> Same I, here. I'm very strong most of the time, but sometimes I have really weak moments and I've had a lot of those lately. Same here. And it's so weird because live television lets me be me with no right. teleprompter, nobody telling me you can't say this, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you love YouTube because it's the yeah. same thing. Right. You give right. your opinion and mm -hmm. if people like it, then they tune back into your channel right. and they subscribe and then if not, they there you go. Then they, they go move away. On. They move on. <laughs> and and we found that doing cooking shows in Atlanta for years, we would enter telly awards and we won twenty four tellies in a year. And it was yes. like, holy crap, you know, people yeah. must like what we're doing. Right. And I looked right. at my director and I said, How do we know people like this stuff? And so he did a counter for me that showed me where people in different mm -hmm. countries were watching us. Oh wow. And I said, yeah. Fred, why are people in Czechoslovakia, um, France, Spain, why are they yes. watching country cooking? And he said, I don't know, but it's working. Right. So, so YouTube is worldwide. Yeah, it, it shocks me when somebody from another country looks at my stuff because it just... Yeah, because yeah, yeah, really rural, County. rural South Georgia or middle Georgia yeah. is, mm -hmm. is kind of very different than Spain. Right. Just a yeah, little bit. It's a, a whole other world. <laughs> maybe that's why they like it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think maybe our lifestyle, and we're going to talk about lifestyle yeah. because you have some relatives in the Ball Ground area, the oh, Jasper area. Yeah, all of my mama's kin come from up yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. And what was your mom's maiden name? Fletcher, and her mama's maiden name was Jones. So. And yeah. do you still have cousins that you keep in touch with? Uh, not too much. I mean, but I mean, yeah, there's some. Yeah, there's. Yeah, I've got a few cousins on Facebook that I think that are still up in this area. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. a lot and of. And how did you past, end up where you are? Uh, my grandparents moved to Forest Park. Mm -hmm. And my daddy, I think, saw the Atlanta invasion coming mm -hmm. years before it did. But yep. dad had a love of the country. Yep. And he moved way, way out in Hampton, Georgia, which now is and not. See, and Hampton is not way out now. <laughs> no, but in 1966. <laughs> yeah. Um, he took my mom to a three-room house with no indoor plumbing, and she was like, excuse me? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. Um, that's where we ended up, you know, and yeah. so when it started building up, and my husband and I were like, I'm like, I, I got to go out yeah. a little farther. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the name of the town you live in now is what? Moreland. Moreland, and mm -hmm. there's a very famous man from Moreland. His yeah. name was Louis Grizzard. Yep. We loved him, and um, I loved sadly, him. so sad. Did he kind of motivate you a little bit to do what you're doing? Because uh, he you know, kind of told his, it like it is. He did, and I loved his writing. And um, I pass his museum almost every time I go to town. Uh huh. And all, but yeah, it was. I loved hearing his stories, and I wished every day that it was still like that. Right. You know, because yeah. now Moreland's pretty much just a dot on the map that you drive through. It's yeah. kind of, it, it's sort of a dead town except for a Dollar General and a pilot. <laughs> wow, wow, that's sad. Now we have the Amazon warehouse, yeah. so. And we want to talk about that because Ball Ground is either the opportunity or the disaster is coming to Ball Ground. We are gonna get that warehouse mm -hmm. or we're not gonna get it. Right. It's up for vote with the city council and I want your opinion when we come back from a commercial break mm -hmm. to talk about what happens to that little town when Amazon comes to town, when FedEx comes to town, when UPS comes to town with a big huge hub yeah. and 200 plus people a day coming in and out and tractors mm -hmm. and trailers and, and we're going to talk about that when yeah. we come back. I also have some trivia for you. Okay. <laughs> Do you know 
who Andy Griffith met when he did the movie Murder in Coweta County. I know it was the, I know he met the second Mrs. Andy Griffith. He did. I don't he remember did. her name, but I know he met Cindy the second. Cindy Knight. Yes. Yes, yes. And, and when he died, that was his widow. His widow. Yeah. And it's, it's very interesting because um, I loved Lamar Potts' character. Really, yes. really loved Lamar Potts. Yes. Didn't like John Wallace too much. Uh, and it was weird yeah, to not that's a like good thing. Andy Griffith. Yeah, it was weird not yeah. to like him. Yeah. It was, it was. I actually one time turned it on the TV as a child and I, you know, old fashioned not, I turned on the TV and I'm like, <gasps> Mom, Andy Griffith's being mean. What's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and I turned it off Shocker. like really fast because yeah, it scared yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about what you do, <clears throat> what I do, and how we got this together. But first, we want to say a happy, happy birthday to Harold Westbrook. And I'm going to tell you something. He's 80. He's oh. in the Canton market. And he happens to have, if I could choose a birthday cake for me for my next birthday, mm. it would be this cake. I don't even drink Coca-Cola, but look oh. at that amazing birthday cake. And oh, he's 82 years old. And look at that cake, y'all. Is that not the I coolest thing you ever that. saw in your life? And then look at how they did the ice cream around it in the little cups. Like That is the coolest is cake awesome. I've ever seen. So if you know, I know Stacy, his daughter, I'm going to call her and find out who did that amazing cake. I want that cake for my next birthday. <laughs> yes. It's a little over the top big. He must know a lot more people than I, you know, that's that's a lot of cake. It is a <laughs> lot. Like a it's huge a lot of cake. fondant. But isn't that amazing? It so is. So we're going to, happy, happy birthday. Birthday to Mr. Harold Westbrook, and Happy I hope birthday, you have a good, good day. Yes. 82 years old, but that right. cake was amazing. Amazing, yes. amazing, amazing. I love Coke, so. much to my dentist's chagrin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, you're going to get to find out how Paula, number one, got involved in YouTube and what motivates her to choose what she's going to talk about. And then I'm going to give her something to think about because there was a murder in Dawson County that has oh. never been solved. Oh. And then there was another murder that was solved, and I interviewed the GBI agent who was fortunate enough to oh. deal with recovering the woman's whole body because she had been decapitated. Oh. And he wow. wrote a book about it, and I'm going to suggest that you read his book because oh. Murder Maybe. is something that affects many people. It does. It affects many people. And Murder in Coweta County is a movie that I hope you have seen. I hope you will know what we're talking about. I love the idea that um, Lamar Potts, you know, Andy Griffith chose to model Andy Taylor after he, Lamar Potts. He did. Because Lamar Potts was a cool dude. He He's was. Cool he dude. has a great history, and I want to do a video simply on him. He yeah. actually deserves a book. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do that when we come back in a mm -hmm. commercial break in just a minute. Thank you. for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Jay, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. 
Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Miss Paula, today is March the 8th, All and right. today, according to my daughter's little um, that she gave me, and this Dom keeps me in, in the word, oh, uh, Lord, where there is distance between me and any family member because of unforgiveness, I pray you would break down that wall. Help me to give every time I need to do so, where I can be an instrument of reconciliation between other family members who have broken or strained relationships, enable me to do that. And I will just say on March 8th, that's the hardest one ever because sometimes your feelings are hurt beyond repair and sometimes, um, but God will forgive everybody and everything. Right. And if you don't forgive, then he doesn't forgive according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. So according to <clears throat> his word, and I think we're supposed to live by it. So, mm -hmm. all right, this earpiece is driving me crazy. Let's see what I can do with that. All right, okay. We found you on YouTube. Actually, I didn't find you on YouTube. Freddie Brackett found you on YouTube. And oh, thank you, Freddie. was watching one day, and uh, I said, I love that movie, and so I started watching you. And um, it was interesting that the well where they found ugh, parts of him mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, um, all these strategic places, when you go out to a scene and you're recreating something that happened 70 some odd years ago, actually mm -hmm. 80 years ago, and you have to, you find that spot. Did you know about a place called the Oaks Motor Court on Stewart Avenue? It was actually used in the movie? No, but uh, I did. Because they had to find something that resembled. I talked to Dick, I was actually, I got a lot of information actually from Dick Adkins, who produced the movie. I mm -hmm. found him quite by accident on um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know about that, but I wanted to find all of the actual real places where it was. And so mm -hmm. I was asking him which places were real. And he said, actually, none of them, because none of them Existed. looked yeah. like they did. And actually, they, you know, many of them exist. The well doesn't, well, it, do, it may, <laughs> it mm -hmm. may, that's, that's a big mystery there, but it's still on Strickland land and Strickland's are. Do the Strickland's still own that? They do, and they really? still defend <clears throat> John Wallace. You, that many, is so weird. Many of them, not all of them, but yeah. many of them do, and the, the ones who own that land, and so. And they defend him for murdering a man who took a cow. Yeah, because it would have been done, that's the way people did things back then. Right, right. And yeah. so um, they saw it as in that was Meriwether County business and Coweta County had no jurisdiction, but it happened in Coweta County. And so there was a big stink over mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. he actually died <laughs> at. Right. And on. so the well is still a huge mystery. Um, they, I don't think, I think everybody who uh, you know, um, had any part of that took that one to their graves. Their grave. um, you know, speaking of graves, um, I had two gentlemen on the show. We actually, we went to Jerry Rushing's home up in North Carolina and mm -hmm. interviewed him. He was in the car with John Wallace as they were chasing, you know, and. Really? And, I didn't. Yeah. We Never interviewed heard his him. name. He's amazing. He's the person who the original Dukes of Hazard was written about. It's his. Was life this story. in the movie? It was in the movie. Oh, he was okay, in the movie. okay. Yes. That's why I haven't heard his name. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He, he was in the movie, and um, and then we also interviewed Danny Nelson, who was in the movie, and okay. both of them have since passed away. Oh. But it was so interesting because to see them and the parts they played, mm -hmm. Danny played very different parts all the time, but often he was a judge, and he wasn't yeah. a judge in this movie. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was interesting. He was the sheriff who actually was the 
I guess the troublemaker sheriff. Collier. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And and it's so strange because Danny always played a good guy or a judge or you know he played different parts and he was mm -hmm. known as the Kate's pickle man. Oh, <laughs> if you've ever yeah, there you that. go. So he started out in Kate's pickle commercials. So mm -hmm. so we interviewed both of them and both of them very different people. And then I think about seeing that movie over and over and over again. And mm -hmm. every time I watch it. I see something that I missed the last time. Uh, yeah, I found that. It's so strange. Because I watched it so many times while I was getting, I used it for my timeline to keep things straight while I was editing mm -hmm. and filming and getting my research together and everything. And yeah, yeah I saw different now, things. Now, why did you choose that? Because of the area you live in? It was, I had, I didn't realize um, until when I, we moved there in 05 and, you know, I would go to town every day and first all I thought of was Louis Grizzard. And then one day I decided to check out the book, Murder in Coweta County, and mm -hmm. I read it and I was like, wait a minute. That happened, like, that had to have happened somewhere right on the road that right. I drive by every day. Mm -hmm. And um, so over the years, um, I just kept thinking about it and, I'm, and all. And uh, when I decided to do this, I was like, this story needs to be done, but it needs to be done with all the real spots mm -hmm. because, and so then I started seeking out what's, what still exists. Mm -hmm. And I was able to find that more still existed than I thought. Yeah, you know, yeah. how cool um, was that? Now it was. It was the research. Ner I, I nerded out of the research big time. In the process of doing this, how many miles did you cover? Do you think a lot? <clears throat> because uh, you know, I mean, there was a good bit right there around. You know, in you know, Coweta. But I mean, you have the Coweta the Noonan Square, mm -hmm. you have... And the courthouse is beautiful. You, the courthouse, and um, you have the, um, uh, which I couldn't get into because it was COVID, mm -hmm. um, and um, then Moreland, of course, that's where the motor court, the Sunset Campground or whatever right. motor camp that it was, and um, then there was Greenville, mm -hmm. and then, which is Meriwether County. Uh, there was a lot of Mary, Durand, where um, the... Where did the Turner family live? They uh, lived on John Wallace's property, and when they ran, they went back to, uh, his wife had family in Carrollton. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't go to Carrollton, but I, I you know, went to, there's a road, it's John Wallace Road. Um, mm -hmm. So we went all over John Wallace Road. <laughs> that was on the news recently and people were talking about the fact that they named a road after someone who was a convicted murderer. I think honestly though, it was kind of a, you know, it was Wallace Road and I think, you know, it was probably something that was done years and years ago. Cause I mean, you think oh, so many roads are named after just people who lived there and since, mm -hmm. his, since the family still lives right. there. Right. I, it probably had to do with the family, um, you know, but I don't know if, when it was done. Are there any Potts descendants left and are there Wallace descendants left in the area where you live? Uh, yeah, there's plenty of Wallace descendants left and, and they're all in Meriwether County and mm -hmm. I was told be very careful who wow. I tell that I'm doing this and don't wow. go down there by myself. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then, um, yeah, actually, I've been trying to get in touch with, and if you ever see this, I want to talk to Skin Edge. Uh, there's a, he's in real estate in, I think, or is he a lawyer? Um, I think he's in both. Um, I'm not sure, in Noonan, very uh -huh. prominent businessman in Noonan, and I would like to Is he related to John Wallace? No, he is uh, Lamar Potts' grandson. Oh, wow. So I would really like to wow. talk to him and, and get... And his name's what? Skin Edge. Skin Edge. Yeah. What an interesting name for yeah, an attorney is. or whatever. Yeah, I, I got to... How old would this gentleman be? Um, In his 60s? I mean, 50s, 60s, something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think 60s, yeah, mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm. that. So I would really like to get in touch with him because I would love to do... Lamar Potts was in office for 32 years and when mm -hmm. he retired there was not a single felony unsolved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He on the day that the first day 
that African Americans were allowed to vote in his, you know, at all, um, there was no problems in Coweta County right. because... Lamar Potts was sheriff. Yes, and there was one man who wanted to vote and he came to him and he said, I'm afraid, and he said, come on, let's go. And after he took him up there, everybody knew, don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't even with, try. Don't mess with Lamar Potts. But yeah, at the same time, I mean, like he went to Kansas to find the body of a young African-American girl and saw, he solved a murder case. Uh, you know, that began in his jurisdiction, you mm -hmm. know, but I mean... In Georgia. And I it began in Georgia and he went to Kansas <laughs> to uh, solve it and, you know, back then that was unheard of. Mm -hmm. Most people did not care and he cared. Right. He didn't care who the crime was against. It was a crime. It was a crime. Yep. And he needed to take care of it. Right. He took care of the people in his community and that's what he did. He also played baseball, and uh, the the baseball club has a plaque to wow. him, and it's called, it's named after him. Mm -hmm. The building's named after mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Okay, if he has a grandson, then obviously he had, he had children. Right. Um, and is there an area where he lived, his family lived? Is it still the same? You know, I, that's the one thing I haven't been able to find. Wow. <laughs> Out wow. of all that, I haven't found anybody who could say, this, this is, is where Lamar, Lamar Parks lived. Wow. Yeah, as I think they're pretty private. Um, and I found out that J.H., his brother, as, as I was going through I the cemetery. I remember him from the movie. He helped him with the surgery. Right. Yeah. His, I have been, I was in the Potts, you know, cemetery plot, and I'm like, it's really odd. I don't see anything for J.H. I wonder where he was buried. And actually, he's buried right there. It's just unmarked. Really? Yeah, and I don't, I would love to know why yeah, it's unmarked. That's weird. Did yeah. J.H. have family? I, that part I'm not sure. I haven't. Interesting. So yeah. something else to research. That is something else to research. So there's, there's a lot there for a And book. a 32-year career. I'm, I'm thinking the grandson needs to be involved and, and get you this can't look do, out. You can't do this without family yeah. involvement. And yeah. the thing is, is, I'm not looking for dirt or anything like that. I think he did a good job. Yeah. I think this is what law enforcement needs right now is we need a reminder that people like this existed. Mm -hmm. This is how the job needs to be done now. Mm -hmm. It's just like Buford Pusser. Right. And, yeah. and you know, Buford Pusser, sadly, he and his wife both lost their lives because he was doing his job the correct way. Right. And mm -hmm. Lamar Potts, I guess, was lucky that he lived, he that lived. somebody didn't stand up to him. And, and as I understand it, he really didn't carry a gun, he mm -hmm. just carried authority. I can't believe, you know, and it's still amazing to me that he went into the Strickland family home and arrested um, one of the uh, Strickland co cohorts that were there mm -hmm. that day. It was part of the murder and um, he walked in the house without a gun and, and didn't he ask just, his deputies to put their guns down too? Yeah, and he yeah. just walked in there with nothing and and they were all armed and he just, I, you know, walked in there and took it. And I mean, I think they all knew. It just, that something about, you know, I'd love to know what was it about him? I mean, with the presence of strength or what, you know, what? And they couldn't have what? chosen a better man than Johnny Cash to play this part. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. He was it, amazing. Even, it's so funny, he looked Nothing like him, no. but he was, it, neither of them looked anything like the person, the person but they were perfect for the part, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and they did an excellent job, yeah. you know, and um, it's interesting, I found out, you know, where everybody went after it happened and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, What about McKaylee? Did you go to her home? I didn't. Um, May Haley Lancaster, um, I am also a conservative Christian woman, and May Haley Lancaster, in my opinion, was the real Which, thing. Yeah. I don't want anything to yeah. do with her. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. has a book, she has a movie, she's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but, um, and honestly, you know, her, her help was. Um, it was good, it was helpful, and it was interesting, to I did find out, one of the things that was interesting is the bad guys around town would come to her and pay her a dollar and a dime to find out if they were going to get caught. Mm -hmm. Well then, all the cops knew 
and this was one of the things Lamar knew this, mm -hmm. and so they would go pay her a dollar and a dime, and she'd tell them whatever what the bad guys told her. Oh wow! So you know that was one of the things that she. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't there in that case. It wasn't necessarily truth. Oh, no, it was truth, but it wasn't necessarily of the magical sort. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just she was telling. Getting information. Yes, she was getting yes. information from it. She did have a sense of right and wrong, and she wanted to see right done, you know, but there were some things about her. She was a character, uh, you know. Um, and the but, picture that you have on your YouTube channel of her, is that an actual photograph yes, of her? Okay. Yes. Because they really did make June Carter Cash look like her. Yes. It was weird. And June Carter played her perfectly <laughs> of everything awesome. I've seen. Because I <laughs> yeah. watched the movie, you know, and um, I watched the documentary. There's a documentary on YouTube couple bucks you can mm -hmm. rent it it's or I think it's on Amazon too it's not you know and it was a really good one um, I've read some things in the newspaper that were just really interesting um, oh goodness his name escapes me now but one of the uh, state patrolmen mm -hmm. that I remember yep he later on after all of this was over later on in her life they were having trouble with um, she kept getting robbed because she did not trust banks as many people didn't mm -hmm, back then mm -hmm. and so people were complaining and they decided they were going to go out and clean up her property and he knew her and he he would stop by regular and check on her and her sister mm -hmm. and her like 15 dogs she had chickens in the house she had she's kind of a hoarder mm -hmm. you know and all and so they started gathering money and so she sits on a blanket in the front yard and they gather money they start bringing money to uh, finding money out it's got out of the house in the barn they dug it up and it had chicken poo on it, it had dog poo on it and they would bring it to her and a lot of people didn't want to touch it but they did bring it and they took it to the laundromat and washed it before, oh because God. the bank went <laughs> oh yeah 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 <laughs> I can see those girls at the bank going, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they stopped them at the door going, I know. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's crazy. You know, we we know people who used to laugh about go out in the backyard and dig up the mason jar full of money, but, but was... people did that because yeah. they did not trust the banks. Yeah. So that is wild. Now, um, I want to ask you about something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've looked this up on YouTube or not. It, mm -hmm. There's a, a story. It's the girl who communicates with the dead in Ellerslie, Georgia. Have you looked at that? I haven't. Are because you... you don't live too far from Ellerslie. Okay. I don't think it's very far from you. Yeah. And it is, um, it's about a young woman, but you, you need to check that out and see okay. if it's something that you might do something with. How do you know where your next blog or story is going to be? Um, where do you find them? I look them up, and part of it is, has anybody else done it? Mm -hmm. um, now, murder in Coweta County has been done, but it wasn't done. It, can I, do I have a different twist on it do I have mm -hmm. a different thought on mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. that one I did have access to the places mm -hmm. and things like that I actually had a subscriber who came down and made a vacation of going to spot by spot by spot mm -hmm. you know and I gave him um, I gave him uh, all ten of points on ten the points on yeah. the map yeah. you know so he could go and um, so uh, one of the things I have I usually like historical murders because, mm -hmm. or something that is solved. Um, sometimes it has to do with the fact of how far do I want to go from home. Right. And right. so I look for something close by. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, um, I decided to look into the all day murders because wow, my. That was something else. Yeah, because my dad said that. His dad, my grandfather, uh, one Sunday had a couple that walked down, and uh, you know, and um, he had an auto shop in Lake City, Georgia, and they had gotten stuck on the road. Grandpa had an old truck that would pull cars. He went and got this couple and brought them back. It was Sunday, and so he fixed their car. Grandma laid out a spread, and they had Sunday dinner, and they stayed the night and all and because um, that's just how grandma grandpa did things mm -hmm. 
and um, he wouldn't charge them because he didn't take money on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and then they left Monday morning and they said, Gran Grandpa loved fish. And apparently one of their fields ended up turning into Lake Seminole and he, they invited them down to fish. And so daddy and grandpa went down there a couple weeks later, went to fish. And then about two weeks from then is when it wasn't that couple, but that couple's children, I think, or sister and brother-in-law, I'm still working mm -hmm. out the, who exactly it was, mm -hmm. um, were, it wasn't, so my pa my dad didn't stay in the trailer where the murder occurred, he stayed in a house that was on the land, mm -hmm. um, but it was a couple weeks later that the murder occurred and he said my grandfather was just torn up because they were such yeah. nice people yeah. Yeah. and stuff. So when he said that, I was like, wait, what, dad? You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was a murder that weren't they convicted convicts came in and, and murdered the whole family. Uh, not the whole family, but most of them. Yeah, about yeah. And it was brutal. It was, yeah. that's one that if I do it, it's gonna need a warning. Yeah, yeah, on it. yeah, yeah, it would need. You know, I remember when that happened and it came out on the news and it was, um, I'm trying to remember the guy's names who did the murders, but yeah. but they all were just hardened criminals and they went in on this innocent family. And, and they... They wanted gas. They yes. had a gas tank for their farm because, you know, to fuel the tractors mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And they saw that and they wanted gas. <clears throat> so why not say, could you sell us some gas? They Can probably gave, gave it to them. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't and ask. And they murdered them. Yeah. Yes. Wow. wow. And so, um, and one of them is out. Wow. Yes. How did he get out of that? Um, he never pulled a trigger. He happened to be there. And then he also was kind of turned state's evidence on his brother and friends. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, Does it worry you that you're going to do a story about that? Um, <clears throat> not really on that one, but I, that's one reason I like the historical ones are like 40, solved. 40 years ago? It's like 1970, yeah, so it's 50. older than me. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, the guy is really old. Um, so it's, that one doesn't bother me so much, but some of them do. Mm -hmm. There's a few that I won't, that I won't touch. Yeah. You know, there's one, you know, there was a, um, case just in, oh goodness, not long ago in real close to us um, where a girl went missing in a hot pink car and it took them months to find that yeah. and all and part of me has wanted to look into it. I'm like, mm, no. Yeah, it's too fresh for the family it's, too. Yeah, it is. There, yeah. there are people, yeah. when you're thinking about it. It's like about, the Meredith gotta, Emerson case, it's only been a few years and I would think that would not be good because we had the GBI agent who actually solved the crime and he has written a book about it and the book's doing very well. But it affected him to a point that he, when he retired, he said out of everything he did all of his life, this will haunt him every day. But it, he was able to to get her head back for her family because right. they made a deal with the devil. And they had to make a deal with the devil and the murderer to get the head back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <clears throat> so it's tough. Murder is one of those things that you're, it's, it is, yeah, it'd be tough. Yeah. And as Could you doing, not find something happy to do? <laughs> I know. I, I, yeah, I should have. I love history and I love mysteries. And um, honestly, what started it is I read this book called, uh, uh, death Unexpected, um, The Infamous Deaths of Fayette County. And um, after I had read it, I would go back and forth in my parents' house in Hampton. And I realized, I'm like, well, there's one where that happened, and there's where that happened, and there's where that happened. And I'm like, wow, all these things happened, and I bet nobody knows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and that was years and years and years went by. And so when I started thinking of doing something on YouTube, that came up, 
you know, and that's where I went to Stars Mill. Mm -hmm. That was one of the mm -hmm. ones because mm -hmm. I would drive by there, and I could. I ever since I read that, I can't drive by there and not think yeah, of that. Not think about it. You know, but and now that one kind of bothered me a little bit because it, I, the only thing is that probably it's just the children that were in the car that are still alive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, but it was never solved. Yeah. Nobody yeah, knows. Yeah. And then I found out somebody, uh, my nephew knows, uh, was related to those people. And I was like, what? Wow, so. wow, wow, crazy. Okay, we want to take a music break and we want to send this out to everybody who is praying for my sweet friend, Selena Hales. She had her fourth chemo yesterday and we are oh, hoping oh. that it's going to be a good day for her. Please yes. pray specifically for her to get through this and for mm -hmm. her body to respond and the Definitely. cancer to go away. So please Definitely. pray for her. And remember, if you want a CD, they are $10 each and we are raising money to help her as she, you know, I don't know if y'all know anything about cancer and chemo, but you're not working when you're fighting cancer and chemo. Yeah. And so we need to help her financially. If you would uh, get in touch with me, you can go by Deb's Bakery in Jasper. You can go by the Robin's Nest in Jasper and you can chase me down on 550 or you can come by my office and I'll have some there. But please help support her. And um, if you've already bought a CD, thank you so very, very much. And please continue to pray for her. So we're going to go to a little bit of music by Angel Spirit. We'll be back shortly. I was thinking of unseen things above. The Savior spoke unto and filled my heart with love. I used to have some people who walked and talked with me, but since I've been converted, they've turned their backs on me. Some say give me silver, some say give me gold. I say give me Jesus who saved my dying soul. I'll take this gospel trumpet and I'll begin to blow. Oh Lord, if you will help me, I'll blow it wherever I go. I'm going to die on the battlefield. I'm going to die in the war. I'm going to die on the battlefield with glory in my soul. to you. But the one for which I long, it makes all the others strong. I need a wall of prayer surrounding me. mercy that I need. But the one for which I long, it makes all the others strong. I need a wall of prayer surrounding me. Round me strong that can't be moved. And I promise you today, 
When I bow my knees to pray, I'll do my best to build a wall of prayer for you. Okay, we're back. You know, when you look at YouTube, you can you can choose a story about any and everything you want. You can learn to garden. You can learn mm -hmm. to can. You can learn to sing. And I have to laugh about this. I can't sing. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. But you can sing. A little bit, yeah. You can sing. So could you sing if I said right now, can you sing me a song? Could you do it? Uh, maybe a little bit. Okay, no. if we took a commercial break and come back, could you just give us a few lines of a song? Maybe. Could you handle that? Okay. Because I laugh, I watch YouTube, and, and sometimes people really can't sing. 
No. <laughs> and you're like, did your mama tell you you could sing? Because you ought to be not on YouTube singing. Yeah, I know I, I know. Can sing. I've always, I've always feared being that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, what kind of music do you like? Uh, country. Country. Okay. Who's your favorite artist? Oh wow. Um, it goes. I grew up listening to Patsy Cline, Kitty Wells, Patty Loveless, Reba McIntyre. The ones I love. Huge. Yes, yes, Reba yes. Reba Yes, huge. I love Reba. Right now I'm on a Susie Bogus, Patty Loveless, Kick. Yeah, yeah. Patty Loveless is in Georgia. Yeah. I love you. Yeah, you yeah. See this? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things that I've been lucky enough to do, I've interviewed some amazing icons, and Connie Smith was one of those. I love Connie Smith. I love Connie Smith. I love Wanda Jackson. Mm. I love Wanda Jackson. My mom loves both of them. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the song, Right or Wrong, when I was a teenager, my mother would say, don't listen to that depressing song. And I said, Mama, I love this song. I love this song. And I told Wanda the day I was interviewing her, I said, I love this song. It's amazing. Uh, Tim, did you find anything else I sent you? Is there anything else that we need to share? And we also want to remind y'all about the St. Patrick's Day Parade that is going to be in town here in LJ. We've got commercials coming on every day about it. If you want to get involved in that, please go to the FOGUS Facebook page. It's F-O-G-U-S, FOGUS, and it is F-O-G-A-S, Friends of Gilmer Animal Shelter, A-S, yeah. And Okay, the Dawsonville Pool Room. We're going to share this with y'all, and then when we come back, Miss Paula is going to sing a few lines for y'all. Is that cool? I'll give it a shot. Okay, we're going to do just a short visit with, um, this is the dude who is cooking at the Dawsonville Pool Room, and we're going to show you his daddy started this place many, many years ago. If you are hungry and you're in Dawsonville, go over there and order yourself a bully burger and know that you will leave smiling from ear to ear. Here we go. Okay. Hey guys, you see the smile on my face? You know why I'm smiling? You see this? This is all that's left. This wonderful man sitting next to me, Gordon Purple Jr., or GP as they call you, made an amazing bully burger. Now, I will tell you about bully burgers. I hate to say this. Gosh, I've been eating here 56 years. <laughs> And um, our family being from Dawson County, my daddy making moonshine, my granddaddy making moonshine, all my uncles making moonshine. We have a little connection going on here. And the Gilreath family, the Trammell family, that's what they did for a living. You know, they didn't get out and do illegal stuff. They were making corn to put food on the table. And that's exactly how racing started, oh, isn't yeah. it? That's yeah. what it all come from, was yeah. here in Dawsonville, because, you know, this was the moonshine capital of the world. Absolutely. At one time. And I love now that they're, Dawsonville is embracing its still life, and your yeah. dad is featured in the newspaper. Oh, yeah. And today it's a big deal because the moonshine is legalized, yeah. and you can buy all kinds of flavors of moonshine. Actually, I think our camera person might have tasted the moonshine every once in a while. Well, you know, and that's one thing I think is so neat about our city hall. Mm -hmm. Where can you go to your city hall? where the two things that made your county what it is, mm -hmm. is inside there. You've That's got right. a distillery on one side, and you've got the Grayson Museum yes, on the other. Yes, I love that museum. And you know, let's talk a little bit about the restaurant because you've made it through the COVID crisis. Yes, and today you were busy when we got here, which is really, really cool. And I'm very thankful for that. And I always worry about your dad's health because I think he's a little bit younger than my mama was, but as he has, slowed down and done whatever he's doing to enjoy life you're taking over and you've been cooking over 40 years yes, is there ever a time that there won't be a dawsonville pool hall no ma'am good that's great got, news. me and my sister have stepped up mm -hmm. you know to running it and everything mm -hmm. and then i've got my kids they're helping and her kids good it's, good we want it to remain a family tradition yeah. you know there's nothing like walking in here smelling that grease having these fries <laughs> and i will tell you honestly i feel so bad because i was going to take a picture of my food and i told you i'm sorry i bit into <laughs> it before i got the picture done and i said oh no Tell me about a bully burger. Who came up with it? It was bully. It was a guy that worked here mm -hmm. back in the day. And back then, it was just that side over there. Right, I remember and, that. And uh, he never wrote down orders. Uh -huh. And you would tell him, well, if you're the first one, you got it your way. Yeah. But if there's two <laughs> or three, you know, you wouldn't. 
you just make it, and a bully burger is all the way. Right. So right. Uh, they'd come in and see that he'd have two or three burgers on there, and they'd just say, Bully, just give me a bully burger. I'm going yeah. to get it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. where it started. It started way before even Bill. You know, mm -hmm. before we got famous right, because of the right. siren and everything. And we have to say, Dawsonville from Dawsonville <laughs> has put Dawsonville truly on the map. Right. And now Chase Elliott, I interviewed Chase when he was 14 years old. We were over at Lanier at the Speedway, and this kid was so together, so on top of it. He was amazing at 14 years old. And I told him, I said, son, you can tell you're a product of your daddy. But Okay, we're back. You got a little bit of Dawsonville pool hall, and I want to remind you, the pool room is open, and on days that Chase Elliott wins the race, you will hear, oh, that big siren go off. <laughs> so that's the day you want to go over there and eat. That's okay, right. Miss Paula, can you give us a few lines of how great they are or Amazing, Amazing Grace? Grace? Amazing Grace. I'll do my best. All right. Especially no coffee or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing grace, <clears throat> how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Beautiful, beautiful. What a, what a wonderful song. Now, if you're in the car, do you sing or do you listen to this? Okay, you do sing to yourself? I'm like crazy woman in the car room. <laughs> And I'm singing like loud and people are walking by going, what? <laughs> and my kids know who, that I'm there to pick them up because they can hear me across the parking lot. <laughs> uh, although I don't do that anymore. I don't do mom taxi anymore because my kids are grown. Mm -hmm. One's in Texas. Um, but yeah, when I did, they knew. And yeah, the, they were probably like going, oh my goodness, that's yeah, my mom. Yeah. How did you how did you find out you could sing? Did you wake up one day as a child and you could sing or was it I don't know. I just I've been singing as long as I can remember and I don't ever remember thinking I was good at it until one day I was singing in the car and daddy goes, That ain't half bad. <laughs> and Let's said, get the car. I was singing to a Judd song and uh -huh. and then the next thing I know he comes home with Patty Loveless and Patsy Klein, uh Cassettes, uh -huh, and uh -huh. all, you know, and then he was like, "You might like Reba," and he, and then, um, and we share a love of country music, and so that it, that was off it. we went, yeah, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, my husband's working on um, my guitar. It's I, I put off play. I put off a lot of things. I homeschooled my kids from the mm -hmm. time they were little, and when we started high school, it was just like, "You're done." Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything had to go, and. Um, so it's he he's been working on it, doing a refurbish, and um, so um, maybe really next time you come back, you can bring your guitar. Kind of learn to play, relearn to some, play. You can do some music, <laughs> and that would be really cool. Yeah. 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 So all of this has been in my like the YouTube thing's been in my head for a long time, mm -hmm. a little bit because I've always wanted to write and things uh, people said oh I like your stories and I never thought I'm like stories I'm like I just that's just stuff that happened that's mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. my family talked like that it's right, you know we talked right. in story and then yeah. I never realized I'm like other people don't do that yeah yeah you know yeah. And so tell people how to get to your YouTube channel okay I am on um, murder most southern so if you go to YouTube and look up murder most southern uh, that's where I am and uh, it's a I guess the icon is a car tag. It just says Murder Most Southern and Established 2020. Mm -hmm. And when you started this, was it because you had some time because of COVID? How did you end up doing this? Uh, my kids graduated. Mm -hmm. My daughter graduated <laughs> and I needed, it was it was time to start something new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. So there you go. After 
15 years of homeschooling, it was time to start something new. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Susan Liebert, you will love this because she has her two furry friends in the car with her and they were really cute and really sweet. One of them looks like, the little white one looks like one we used to have. His name was Whiskers. Oh. So, so are they babies? Are they your, they're, are they your babies they're now? They're my best buddies yeah. and uh, one, uh, the other one, one's a silky terrier and she's nine mm -hmm. and her name is Sadie and the other is, he just turned a year old last week and his name is Captain Brockington Fendig. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> but we call him Finn or Fendig. Oh, wow. wow. So, uh, but it's so funny because I can say Captain Brockington Fendig, his little head goes. <laughs> That's funny. But he usually it's followed by, come here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm so glad you were here today. I, thank and, you for having and me. And I want y'all to watch the movie Murder in Cowarita County mm -hmm. and then go to her um, channel. And again, it is Murder Most Southern. Mm -hmm. And um, we, you know what's something we didn't even talk about? Concord, Georgia, Williamson, Georgia, oh, yeah. Hampton, Georgia. I have so many Connections. Wonderful memories down there, mm -hmm. and it's our, our business was in Forest Park for years and years and years, yeah. and y'all started in Forest Park. So it's so strange that we have so many connections. Did you ever hear of Mitchell's Garage? No, okay. no. But we, yeah. we our garage was right around the corner from the farmers market. Okay. On um, right. Forest Parkway. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And it, it's so interesting how this small world gets smaller because YouTube connects us. It does. And, and it's really cool. So yeah. thank you for being here today. Thank you for and, having uh, me. And we will do this again. And next time she comes, she'll be a, she'll be a singing lady. So <laughs> maybe I can get her to do a Reba McIntyre. My son loves this song. Um, oh, what is it called? He gets that from me. Oh yeah. Yes, he loves with that Kenny song. Chet she did that with Kenny Chesney. Loves Kenny that Chesney. song. Loves yeah. that song. Oh, so. No, she didn't. That's a different one. Yeah, she did that yeah, one that by herself, but it's one. awesome. Yeah. Where she goes to her husband's grave. Yes. It's awesome. You'll have to learn mm -hmm. that one. So I hope that you will join us tomorrow because tomorrow is my daughter Dawn Day. Dawn will be here. Dawn is finally coming out of her shell Yay. and she is going to do some Bible study. She is going to be with us and we are going to share healing because healing is what happens when you decide that you don't want to go the route to suicide and today the program is in memory of Mike Rizzuco, a dear dear friend who sadly reached the end of his life and um, suicide is not the answer it is a permanent solution to a temporary situation so please remember that um, you are good you are loved and you are a child of the almighty god and uh, he loves you and we do too we'll see you again mm -hmm. soon only on etc bye y'all bye y'all bye you got me looking on the bright